I'm going to editorialize here for a minute about core aeration, where you take an aerifier that usually has a drum roller, it's got hollow tines, they press into the soil, and when it's working correctly, we'll pull out a little plug of soil. Um, it's my opinion that this is probably one of the most oversold uh, fat, um, uh, services in landscape. And I've got a few theories on why. Um, like I said, I'm going to editorialize here for a minute, but on the golf course, um, my degree is in turf grass management. I spent years on the golf course. And uh, for, the, for the most part, we use core aeration on the golf course greens. Um, and it was largely a matter of controlling thatch. Thatch was a problem because when you're growing a cool season grass like bent grass in North Texas, you have to use a lot of fungicides. You have to use a lot of pesticides. When you're putting out that much um, uh, broad spectrum pesticide, like every month, uh, you have to treat for something, cut worms and some other things that aren't normally a problem on a residential lawn. When you're using that, you disrupt the soil biosphere, the microbial activity in the soil meaning that there's no bacteria to help break down old grass and it tends to accumulate and become a real spongy soft layer on top of the soil and on a golf green, that's a bad thing. So we use core aeration combined with top dressing where we're gonna put sand down to fill those holes, largely as a matter of thatch control. And it, did have, it does have some secondary benefits, a little bit better water infiltration as opposed to a thatchy um, lawn, etc. Um, my personal opinion is that most residential lawns don't necessarily need core aeration from year to year to year. The areas where they do have serious compaction, I don't believe that core aeration makes a huge difference. If I take a nice soft piece of the cake that my grandma makes, a nice spongy beautiful piece of cake, and I stomp on it with my foot, and then I poke a hole in the center of it, it doesn't fluff back out. The soil is largely the same way. That When you poke that hole, you're expecting the soil around it to shatter and kind of fill that in, unless you top dress. And even then, you're only changing one to 2% of the soil profile. Um, so core aeration is a service that is, or, or compaction on residential lawns is overdiagnosed in my opinion. I think a lot of the times that people are, 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 are diagnosing compaction, what they're seeing is a very dry soil. Um, a lot of the normal compaction problems you see on a residential lawn can be solved primarily through better irrigation practices. Um, but back to, um, to core aeration, I personally believe that it's mostly unnecessary on a large number of uh, residential lawns. Where it will benefit are usually the severely compacted areas that it's either gonna be a minimal improvement or no improvement at all because anybody who's looked at very closely when you use a drum roller type of uh, um, aerator, when it hits really hard soil, it doesn't penetrate. It'll just pop out a core that's only about a half inch deep and that is doing nothing for anybody. Um, so um, I think it's often overdiagnosed and over recommended. Um, it's ineffective for severe compaction. If your dog is running, if you got a 200 pound dog that's running the fence, if you got a 200 pound dog, send me a pic. But if you've got a large dog or a, a herd of dogs that are running the fence and smashing your soil down and there's no grass growing there, Poking the holes in it with a mechanical aer uh, aerator is not going to fix that problem um, in, a, in a short amount of time. Um, the sprinkler damage that comes with core aeration is significant. Most of the parkways here in North Texas are drip underneath the turf. If you run that core aerifier on the parkway strip that has drip underneath it, you're probably going to poke 10 to 20 to 100 holes in your drip line. And your poor irrigator, when he comes out, he'll only see one or two at a time. He'll fix one and another one pops up. And then he's out there for three hours playing whack-a-mole. Or even worse, they just abandon the thing altogether and have to rerun drip in there because, uh, because of running a core, air, uh, core air fire on that. Um, so the sprinkler damage, whether it's hitting the head or hitting drip or something like that, is significant. And really to fix that, you need to have a sprinkler check prior to 
the, the, the aerification and then after the aerification. So really you're having to pay for two sprinkler checks by a TCEQ licensed technician and the core aerification if it's being done correctly. Um, and we learned that the hard way. Um, sprinkler damage, the worst areas aren't penetrated. It can disrupt the pre-emergent barrier. If you've got a pre-emergent barrier on your soil and you're gonna poke holes every four inches in that, there's a greater than zero chance that you're gonna disrupt that barrier and allow weeds to be able to, to come through it and, and worsen your weed problems where using something like a liquid air wouldn't do that. Um, it's messy. If it does actually pull cores out, anybody who's got dogs has seen the mud that gets tracked into the house. The cores take a while to break down, especially in North Texas where we have clay soils that dry out into like a, the hardness of a brick. It can be really messy. And a lot of that mess ends up on your white carpet. Um, and then finally, a very relatively small percentage of the total square footage or square inches of your soil is actually affected by that. Um, so when we talk about core aeration versus liquid air, if you have severe compaction, one of the best ways to deal with that, one of the only ways to deal with that is to put a tiller into it and loosen that soil up, get some organic matter in there. Just simply poking a few holes in it is probably going to do next to nothing or it's going to take an extraneous amount of time for that to actually take uh, have a beneficial effect. Um, I, we talked a lot about liquid air. It's not a, the, the be all end all of compaction solutions, but it does make a healthier soil in my opinion. So if you have any questions about this, please throw them in the comments. I'm happy to answer any questions. Again, some of this is just opinion. So if you disagree with me, let's talk about it. I'm open-minded on the subject, but based on about 30 years of doing this, this is um, pretty accurate as far as I'm concerned.